welcome to another Bluey Game Banger. We haven't done one of these for a while, but today's going to be a Bluey 147, I believe. Uh, yes, uh, we've got a uh, name storm uh, coming over, and the name is... Itha, I think. It's <laughs> been a bit unusual. We've got to the third week of the year before getting our name storm, instead of getting it in the first week of the year. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, all our lines are doubled. So we have our storm lines on. Um, we've got extra fenders out to protect us from the boat next door, just in case the worst comes to the worst. We're, um, we're currently being blown off the uh, finger pontoon. So at least our fenders won't go pop. At least that's the theory. That is the theory. So, uh, uh, that, that's what's going on. But what I think we want to talk about in this one is a number of issues were raised in the Man Overboard video of things that we maybe, maybe didn't explain quite correctly or things that viewers have added in and said, why didn't you think of this or why don't you do that? The first of those uh, was uh, getting into the dinghy. Uh, one of um, our viewers said, what you've got to do, there is a technique to it. And the technique is to get one leg over the side, even if that's over the sponson or over the back of the... Yeah, over the stern board, the transom. Transom. Yeah. But getting the leg over the side, and then once you've got the leg over the side, then you can kind of like haul, help them haul them in. Uh -huh. um, not going to be going to do that, but... Not in this weather, we'll wait till the summertime. Yeah, so that is something <laughs> that we are going to try in the summer. Somebody else said, what about the anchor? Well, another thing that we've had a lot of comments about is, could we use the anchor to bring somebody up? This is our anchor. It's a 16 kilogram anchor, which is oversized for our boat. Lumar says 10 kilograms would do because all you need the anchor to do is hold the chain down. Just the chain does the work apparently. But, different video for that. This is what people have said is, couldn't people, couldn't you casually cling to the anchor chain and then you hoist them up? Well, we've got a number of issues with that. Firstly, we're at the end of the boat. In rough seas, this is gonna be bouncing up and down like a cork, just like the stern is. So if you do get a casualty up here, uh, clinging to the anchor chain, maybe even standing on the anchor, they're going to be bouncing up and down with an anchor pulpit right above them, the bow of the boat, the anchor itself, the chain, the roller. It seems to me to be a very dangerous place. Uh, if it wasn't a bouncy day, I'd take them up the stern ladder. It's a lot safer. Now, another issue is, even if you can get people up on this, there's the load limit of your windlass. Our Loughran's windlass has a load limit of 100 kilograms, and that means it can lift 100 kilograms. This is 16. The chain weighs 15 kilograms every 10 meters. Most people weigh 70 kilograms or more, and when they're wet, they'll weigh a lot more. So I don't think the windlass would actually lift anybody. But for the reasons I outlined earlier, I don't think we should even try. But the other uh, method that was mentioned uh, was my using a bosun's chair. Now, we didn't think of that purely because our bosun's chair is buried under the V-berth and it's not an easy item to get out. However, we do have a fender step, uh, the one that Beverly made, and there's a link to how she made that in the video below, uh, in the, sorry, in the video description below. Um, so we used the fender step and uh, just tried that out, didn't we, Beverly? We did. But I think it would work to some extent. However, it suffers from the same problem a lot of these methods uh, come to, these alternative methods have been given, which is unconscious casualties or ones suffering from cold shock. So let's have a little talk about that. So. What do we do to prevent cold shock if we fall in? Well, preparation is the number one thing that you have to do. You have to be prepared. So when it's cold out, we are in our mullions. And I'll go, go get one now. So you've seen us um in our mullions on numerous occasions what exactly are they gainer uh they are actually uh full body suits um that will keep you warm there is insulation in these um in these clothes i reckon about five millimeters thick um they're quite tight fitting as well so what it means is it's not 
on your body so that you can't move uh, but it's close to your body so if you do fall in uh, the amount of water that actually gets inside is quite small and it doesn't take that long for your body to heat that up but this insulation means that you're going to have a sea survival time of about two hours whereas without it you've only got a sea survival time of 10 minutes so what cold shock is is it will paralyze your body and it will stop you doing things and eventually it actually stops your chest muscles breathing but this is why you need gear like this uh, to keep you warm because no if you're in the water it's going to be nasty As you can see, we're also not wearing life jackets or anything like that. And that was another issue that was raised, wasn't it? Absolutely. Uh, one of the uh, questions that came up from last week's video is that our life jackets didn't have a lifting ring. But that was because I wasn't wearing our life jacket. This is our life jacket. And um, the thing about our life jackets are these inflate. As soon as you go into the water, they inflate and they flip you up so that your face is out of the water. But we do have a lifting ring on our life jacket. What I was wearing for the purpose of the uh, man overboard video was our personal flotation device, or what we call it on Salty Lass is a dinghy jacket. And uh, we use this when we're in the dinghy because we know that we're going to get wet or if we're going into the water we are going to get wet but the difference between this is yes this one does not have a lifting ring however if you're in the water it just gives you that extra buoyancy and you can move around and you can do all sorts of stuff and it's what we wear on the dinghy the purpose of a lifting ring is so that you can be lifted but i will tell you now as somebody who has been lifted uh, by the lifting ring, it is painful. You are going to get your sides crushed and it is incredibly painful. It is an emergency only. Um, yeah, falling in gainer is an emergency. Well, exactly. You know, you've fallen in, it's an emergency. Yes, you're not worrying about somebody crushing their... <laughs> crushing their rib cage but the difficulty is how do you actually lift put on a um, lifting ring onto the halyard if the person is unconscious if they are and in our waters cold shock is a big thing you have got so little time between the person going in and them to be not do lally because when you get cold shock, one of the things that happens is that you can't think properly. So whereas, you know, putting on a ring is quite simple, when you've got cold shock, that is actually a very, very difficult thing to do. Um, you know, because you're cold and sometimes you can't even feel your fingers. So trying to actually do something like that, which is, uh, you know, fiddly, it's very difficult. So okay. we're going to get a bit of lunch now. Um, the worst of the storm is meant to happen tonight. Uh, we'll try and film something for you, but it will be pitch black 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock at night. Don't know what we're going to get, but we'll see. I'm doing the last little modifications um, to our sling. When I uh, jumped in and we tested the sling, there was a couple of things that we were concerned about. First of all, um, we have this sheet of ripstock nylon that helps keep the uh, sling from tangling. And um, the idea for that was sort of like it could just go overboard. 
Well, Beverly and I both didn't like the idea. First of all, it could go under the prop, you're littering the sea, and you don't know if it's going to cause damage somewhere else. So um, I'm just stitching the ripstop nylon to the sling. So that's one modification. The other modification I've done is um, I've used um, a bit of piping with some bungee cord in it and I've cut it uh, where the ladder section is and the reason I've cut it there is so that the sling can still bend um, but the bungee cord will, when they're straight, will basically keep them together and you just need to jiggle it a bit and it goes straight. We needed a way of keeping the two sides of the net apart. We did because the problem was um, when I was getting onto it um, the, the netting was getting underneath me and I was having to jiggle it underneath my bottom. It wasn't doing it naturally. Which leads to the secondary problem. <laughs> it floats. It floats. Uh, so what I've done with that... And it floated higher in the water than the casualty. Yeah. So what I've done with that is um, on one of the tubings I've added weights. Now I've only used... Um, weights that you put on fishing line and I've stitched those weights on so I've got a weight here and um, these are the modifications well Beverly's outside at the moment um, We've decided, or she's decided, to um, lift a fender between us and the boat that's next to us uh, because the lean that we're getting is over five degrees in the gusts. Um, so it's pretty um, bit of a doozy, really. Bit of a doozy. So what have you been doing out there, Bev? Oh, I don't know. Um, checking everything, including other people's boats. Uh, we removed the um, bubble wrap bubble wrap insulation from that side, simply because it was flailing so dreadfully on the lee side. It's not so bad. We're closer to that in the boat next door than I've ever wanted to be. And um, I put an extra fender in there. I've checked a couple of the boats further up the pontoon from us and one of them I thought needed a few extra lines but, you know, it wasn't really much I could do but I've done what I can with the lines that were there. Uh, um, one of our grub screws, we've obviously got sloppy, we had the dinghy tied down sufficiently tightly for my liking and one of the grub screws on the solar arch had obviously worked loose over whenever um, and the solar arch lifted out of its socket a bit like it did at Port St Mary one time so I've, I've put that back in and we've tightened up the grub screw it seems to be holding but I've secured an extra line under the solar arch just to be on the safe side and that's on a cleat but to be honest a night like this I could do with 14 cleats on a boat because three just ain't enough on one side so uh, I'm just listening to all the funny noises the boat's making in this we've seen the wind hit 59 knots in here in the gusts um, looks like we're in for an exciting night, and that damn light on your phone is blinding. Well, it's the morning after the night before, and I think the rain's about to come on. Um, the wind's hit force 12 last night. Fortunately for us, it wasn't too bad. Yes, I think the rain is about to start, so I'll make this brief. Um, basically, we didn't have much damage on board. A couple of things came loose in the storm. Not really a surprise. Um, a few of the grub screws on the solar arch obviously needed more tightening than I thought because two of the sockets popped out but it made a bit of a racket we popped them back in and tightened up the grub screws and all was good for the rest of the night. The binnacle cover tried to leave the binnacle but we sorted that out and the little funny, funny foam insulation we use. Whoa! <laughs> that came off on, on Gainer's side which uh, made for an eventful evening and it's, it's a bit wrecked on my side but there's nothing that can't wait, nothing that can't be fixed so I'll do that later. But I think right now I, I, I was going to reseat the dinghy because the dinghy needs to be reseated. Um, all the dinghy lines got tangled up in the, in the weather. And to be honest, as long as it was lashed to the boat, we didn't really care. But um, 
that's something I'll need to sort out but I am going to do it while there's a different kind of lashing going on so I'm getting back inside. <laughs> 